Okay, let's talk about Unit 7, Lesson 3, Identifying Exponential Functions. So, exponential functions are usually in the form y equals a b to the x, but there are some essential components of this. So what you'll notice is there's always going to be a variable in the exponent. There can be fractions, numbers, but there's going to be one variable and it's always going to be written in the exponent. The a is not um, set, it doesn't have to be there, but that is your key. So let's look at our examples. Which of the following functions are exponential? So we've got y equals 2x plus 1. So this is like x to the first, and you'll notice we don't have any exponents. So this is not exponential. It's actually a line. Just so you know. All right, let's look at the next example. Y equals 2 to the x minus 1. So I look, I've got a base number, and I have an x in the exponent. The minus 1 moves it left and right, but that's irrelevant. This is exponential. All right, our third, y equals 5 squared plus x. We do have an exponent, but it's of 2. That's not a variable. The variable is just being added. Nope. Y equals 5 divided by 2x. No exponent here. We have a denominator, but that is not a requirement. Y equals x cubed plus 3. So I do have x to a cubed, but my variable is the base. My variable is not in the exponent. And my last example looks really complicated. 2 times 1 half to the 3 minus x plus 56. Well, the numbers are irrelevant. I've got an exponent, and I have a variable in the exponent. That meets the criteria. All right, so next we're going to have you complete a table of values. So if we complete a table, you're going to substitute known values for x to find y, which is also f of x. So you can use a calculator, you can do this by hand, um, whatever you feel more comfortable with. So I've got this table right down here. I'm going to do my work over here. So I've got 1 half to the x plus 3. And they give us six values to use. So if x equals negative 2, I've got 1 half to the negative 2 plus 3. So you can type that in, or 1 half squared is 1 fourth, the reciprocal is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. But remember, we can go ahead and type that in. So I'm going to do 1 half to the negative 2 plus 3, 7. And if you get decimal answers, you can write the decimal as well. All right, if x equals negative 1, I get negative 1 half, I'm sorry, to the negative 1 plus 3. So 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. The negative makes it a reciprocal, so 2 plus 3 gives me 5. 0 is 1 half to the 0 plus 3. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so 1 plus 3 is 4. All right. If x equals 1, I get 1 half to the 1 plus 3. 1 half plus 3 is 3 and a half, or you can write it as 3.5. Decimals are fine. 2, I get 1 half to the 2 plus 3. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth plus 3 is 3 and a fourth, or 3.25. And then 3. I get 1 half cubed plus 3. So 1 half cubed is 1 eighth plus 3. I'm going to write that as 3 and 1 eighth. Mixed numbers are fine. Okay, so the last topic is going to be exploring exponential functions. So if I want to apply them, I need to know how to use the general formula. y equals a b to the x. So from the first section, A was the initial amount. And that's what you start with. There will be a starting population, a starting money value. B 
is our growth rate. So even if something is decaying, we are going to figure out how much it's actually growing. And it might be growing less than 100%, but B needs to be written in terms of the growth. T is going to be my time increment. Days, years, months, it really depends on the problem. And then Y is going to be the final amount, and that's usually what you are looking for. Okay, so let's look at our first example. We're going to talk about trucks. So, trucks depreciate. This truck sells for $38,000 and it depreciates 25% each year. So, we want to find out how much is the truck worth after four years. So, first thing, since this is money, please use two decimal places. Okay, so I get y equals a b to the x. So, I need to figure out what does it start out as? Well, that's $38,000. Now, how much is it growing? If I depreciate 25%, so that means I'm decaying 25%, everything adds up to 100%, which means we are growing 75%, because I'm going to take 100 minus how much I decay. So 100 minus 25 gives me 75. So I am growing less than 100%, so we will get smaller. So now 75% is how much we are decaying, and this needs to be changed to a decimal. So you always move 2 to the left or divide by 100. So our growth is 0.75. And then x is the time. We're talking about 4 years. So now we do not do this by hand. You're going to need to grab a calculator. You can use one online. We've got 38,000. 0.75 to the fourth. So, ooh, it's worth $12,023, and then that would be 44 cents. Okay, so when you're showing your work, show at least the formula, and then show your answer to the appropriate increment. All right, let's talk about deer. So, the deer population increases at a rate of 4% per year. There are 1,573 deer this year. How many deer will there be in 10 years? Round to the nearest deer. So, we don't want half deers. So, let's go ahead and add to our notes. So, if we have decay, we're going to take our base number is 100 minus the decay amount and then we're going to change to a decimal. Okay. Now, growth. Growth, we learned that growth, our base needs to be bigger than one. So in order to get, I know I'm growing 4%, but in order to get something to be bigger than one, we're going to take that 100% and we're going to add how much it's growing. And then once again, we always change to a decimal by moving it two places to the right or dividing by 100. So here we've got y equals a b to the x. We are going to start out with 1573. And then our base, we've got 100 plus the 4, because that's what we're growing, which is 104. If I move that 2 to the left or divide by 100, that means that our base is 1.04. And notice our base is bigger than 1, so we know we're going to grow. Our time is 10. All right, so I've got 1573, 1.04 to the 10. And they want us to round to the nearest deer, so we are going to have 2,000. 328.